So first of all, welcome to Berlin. Thank you. Um, I want to tell you, when I was a kid, I used to act, I was an actor. And if I should ever go back to acting, it would definitely have to be a movie that traumatizes me, like movies that you make. That's, that would be the only thing that would bring me back. Um, I watched Ghostland and it is a movie that totally gave me everything that I was expecting from your movies. Um, I was afraid, I was shocked, I was, you know, suffering with the characters, I was scared. So how do you create this environment? My reasons to do with these movies is like, I, I want you to suffer in a way, yes, but with my characters, not against them. That's the only thing I'm, I'm stuck to when I do a movie. The more, I mean, I, I can be very wild, very violent, but uh, I, oh, but I always try to find a balance between the shock and the emotion because I am the characters, I have no distance with the story I'm trying to tell. There is not a single drop of irony or cynicism in my movies. That's not something I, I, can't, I can't even stand in real life, you know. And my, I would say my only, my only moral and my only honor is that I share my character's experience. It's mine, in a way, you know. So maybe that creates that singular tone of my of what I'm trying to do. Is it sometimes like you do a movie or maybe you write things and then you're like no this is not hard enough this has to be more emotional this has to be more yes yeah, mean yes yeah 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 and you know for me I mean doing a horror film or as a member of the audience because I at first I am a horror fan I always loved the genre because it was a way for me to experience the evil and, and the bad things in life and trying to give them a shape in order to be able to uh, tolerate them. And I think that, I mean, horror films have, have made of me a better person. Like, they have been very beneficial to me. They never hurt me, never. Maybe some it. sort of therapy, in a way. In a way, and also in a way, in a, a promise that I would be, uh, become an adult, and, 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 uh, and uh, I, I don't know, and, and there would, a way to support myself, I mean, a way to feel that I was not a monster, that I was not, I was deserving to have a, uh, to have a life. And also a way to, to, I think when you love horror, you, you have a, a lot of issues with the social rules of the game and you know that, that you're gonna be an, an outsider all your life long. And horror is a genre that, that gives you the um, strengths to accept the fact that you're going to be out of this game for your interest. So it gave me a life. I mean, basically these movies saved my, my ass uh, as a teenager, you know. And, and when, when I do mine, I, I always help, I always hope that it's going to help someone in the audience, you know, a young, a young teenager, a girl, or, you know, who's, who's going who's gonna to see her on, on screen and say, okay, I, I, can, I, can, I can have a life. Even if I feel the pain, even if I if I uh, feel like shit, I feel I feel like like I am a monster. You know, I still deserve to have a life. So since you're very good in scaring people with your movies and you know leaving them with an open mouth behind, I want to know what scares you. Oh, uh, a lot of things, but mainly death. You know, and now that I have a son, I, I would say that the death of my son. I think that there is nothing scarier than that for me, uh, which didn't change anything about my the level of violence I put in my movies, uh, but uh, because for me it's a big meta metaphor, a way, it's, it's a way for me. You know, horror, I mean, violence, gore, even if Gosland is not very gory, yeah. uh, but uh, violence, you know, the fact that you spend two years of your life trying to make a very dark, to tell a very dark story, um, didn't change anything about my approach to my own death and everything. But it, it keeps on give, giving me the strength to stand the human human condition, you know. And horror is a wonderful gesture, is a wonderful artistic gesture that that contains a contra contradiction, like taking the worst of the human condition and organize it into something beautiful. I, I've, I've got a very melancholic relationship to my movies and to the genre itself. It's, it's not only about fear, it's never about disgusting the audience, it's not my energy at all. I, I want the audience to be moved, in fact, to be a bit modified by the experience of watching it. Well, for, for me, at least for me, it worked, guys, I want to <laughs> tell you that. I'm actually a huge fan of um, French horror movies, I feel like they're kind of different, they have a special, you know, tension, a special... Mm -hmm. Feeling mm -hmm. high tension. Uh, L'Interieur is one of my favorite movies of all time. Inside, yep. 
Um, what do you think is the magic behind French horror movies? I think because the, the French industry didn't produce these movies for years, it created such a level of frustration that we, we had to finally unleash it, you know? And, you know, French people are uh, proud guys and we don't want to look like we are American because we're nuts and we're, we're following our, our own voice and we don't want our movie to look like the, the mainstream Hollywood uh, stuff, you know? Uh, and I, I, I hope it's the same here in Germany. I mean, you know, like in, uh, as a movie buff, you know, I love the 60s and the 70s because each country, including Germany, was producing its own stuff. Whether it was westerns or, or uh, you know, uh, fantastic films or horror films, uh, action films, uh, Euro European cinema was very different from Hollywood. And now that Hollywood is dominating everything, I don't like that, that, that situation. So how do you feel about remakes? I mean, there was a remake. I tried to do one, yeah, yeah, for yeah. the Weinstein brothers. I don't know if you if you yeah, if you know about them. Uh, <laughs> so I spent a few months. Well, I heard about Hellraiser, right? Uh, oh yeah, Hellraiser. I was talking about the Weinstein yeah. brothers. Um, maybe it rings a bell. Um, no, I spent four months, five months there, uh, but they didn't want to do the same movie that I, 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 want, I wanted to do. So when they refused my first draft, I just ran away and they never saw me again. Yeah, life is too short to be humiliated and, and dominated by a, a bunch of executives in Hollywood who, who, treat, who, who, who treat you hardly. You know, I don't do this, 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 this job for, for these reasons, you know. Um, we, of course, have to talk about what happened on set. There was an accident yep, yep. that happened um, yep, yep. with the beautiful Taylor Hickson. Yep. Um, Actually, when I watched the movie, I, I was trying to figure out at which, which part she wasn't on the set anymore, which obviously I couldn't find because it was all very well shut and I couldn't see a difference that she was not on set at a mm -hmm. certain point anymore. How did you experience what happened oh, on it, set? It, for me, it was. can you imagine that? Like, I mean, hurting, I mean, uh, having one of your actresses or your or one member of the crew hurt for real in a, in a movie, I mean, it, there is nothing worse for a director, nothing worse. So, you know that, I mean, there is a, a, a legal charge it, that I'm not involved legally into the, into the case, you know, mm -hmm. it's between, Terror's lawyers and 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 the producers' uh, lawyers, uh, so I'm not allowed about I'm not allowed to give you my own version of the facts, uh, of course. All the more as the only thing I want I want to say very clearly today is that I am supporting humanly Terror 100 uh, percent. On set, she was like my my daughter. Uh, uh, she brought a lot uh, artistically and humanly uh, to the movie. It was a shock for all of us, you know, and. Um, because, you know, I don't know if it's the case in Germany, but in France, on the, on the social networks, she was attacked by some people who don't know a shit about what happens, you know, uh, accusing her to trying to create some buzz on the movie a few days before the release and blah, blah, blah. And that, that's something I can't stand and I can't tolerate. She's a wonderful uh, human being. She's a wonderful actress. She's 20, you know, and I don't want her to be attacked. And I'm, again, supporting her 100% unconditionally. So just for the record, nobody in Germany talked shit about her. It was like, oh, what happened on set is very sad and everybody's trying to figure out what, what's going yes. to happen yeah. now. It, it, yeah, it, and now it's you know in between the insurance hands and the lawyers yeah. and, and it much, it's much beyond me. And again, I, I can't give you the, my, uh, my, my, my version of the facts, you know. Okay, let's talk about evil persons, about evil characters. I mean, you obviously have a lot of them in your movies, evil persons who are, you know, hurting and, and you know, um, humiliating people and trying to break them. Um, is there an end of bad? I mean, is there like a point where a person can't get any more evil? Uh, I, I have no idea. For me, all of this is is very symbolic. It's 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 like it's like fairy tales. It's like it's, my movies are like very dark fairy tales, but still fairy tales. It's a metaphor. It's a way to speak about our everyday real pains. You know, and I, I come from a very balanced middle class French family. My parents are still together. I've had a very happy uh, youth. You know, but I still felt a, 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 a huge. Um, level of melancholy and, and, and fear and everything and for me it's just a way to talk about our life you know the monsters and it's, it's all and this movie has a sense of grotesque you know I wanted a very freak show kind of art direction because my previous film The Tall Man was pretty realistic and I felt the the, the, the need as a, as a movie maker to do something that I hadn't done before so and and all the more as I wanted to shoot this movie like 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 a fairy tale like um, a Grim, Grim Brother dark fairy tale. 
And is it one of your purposes when doing movies that you want people to talk about the movie afterwards? I mean, that's what I have to do every time I yeah, watch too, a movie. Me too. It's me like too. I have to talk hours. I was asking my friends today at work, you have to watch this movie. I need somebody to talk about. Uh, absolutely. You know? I mean, whether whether the the audience loved my movie or rejected, I want them. I mean, exiting the theater to have the feeling that they had a real cinematic experience, you know? Something that, again, modified them a bit. I would love them to keep the movie a few days in their, in their uh, belly, you know, in their brain and, and here too. Uh, what I'm wondering is you actually have never done a sequel of a movie. I mean, you never. probably could, but is that ever going to happen? Or is a movie a movie and it's done? Yeah, you know, spending two days, uh, t two years, I mean, spending two years, two full years on such a dark territory. When it's finished, you, 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 you don't feel like going back to, to tell the same story with the same... You know, I mean, sequels, sequels and remakes are always about the money. Some of them are good, most of them are not that good. And I'm not that kind of, I'm not that kind of director. How would be your reaction if Netflix would call you and say, hey, we love you, and we love all your movies that you've done, we want you to make a show for Netflix, like 12 episodes? I would love to, I would love to. Better, better working with Netflix than, than not working at all. I mean, I'm, you have to understand that for me, it's still very harsh to find the money and do my movies. That's why I, sh I shoot one movie every five or six years, which is very long, including econ economically. You know, I still do movies to pay my rent, which is a very healthy reason to do films too, you know? Uh, but uh, I would be a much happier person if I could shoot, yeah, every two or three years. So I would love to, to do something with Netflix, whether it's a feature film or a, or a series. All right, Netflix, if you see this interview, just <laughs> yeah, yeah, call yeah. this, sir. All right? I'm a director for hire. <laughs> <laughs> sir, it was very nice to meet you. Take care. Nice to meet you too. All right, take care. Bye.